Hello everyone on the internet, how are you all doing? Welcome to this channel, my name is Mike Williams and today I am going to prepare you for what is to come on the week. Let's do a little bit of an update, big week up ahead, a lot of things are bound to happen uh, in the crypto, in crypto land. And uh, basically what I want to do here is give you a, give you a real quick walkthrough of uh, the things that we can anticipate on what, what can happen. And of course, uh, some key levels that you want to be aware of on the price action on both Ethereum and Bitcoin. So let's get started. My name is Mike Williams. Once more, please leave a like and subscribe if you are enjoying this type of content. And if you want to see more of it, leaving that like and hitting that subscribe button helps out tremendously um, in uh, to, to get to get the information out there so without further ado let's get started let's have a little bit of an overview on uh, what has been going on um, you know and review a little bit so the first thing that I want to discuss is ethereum ethereum has seen quite a uh, a lot of FUD. That is what, what ruled my Twitter feed or X feed nowadays has been saying over the last few uh, days. Uh, as um, antiprosynthetis.eat already mentioned as well, I felt the exact same way. Half of my feed is eat FUD at this point. So what really is going on? Why is this happening? What is going on? Well, first of all, we have Ethereum uh, or Vitalik, the man himself, actually selling his Ethereum. Ethereum holdings over here uh, for uh, donating uh, and contributing uh, to a bio defense group, which um, which he which is something that he funds, and in order to do so, he needed to sell uh, a part of 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 course of his Ethereum. So, in my view, this has not much to do with the fact that. Mm, that Vitalik is, is, is leaving the project or is getting bearish or whatsoever. Uh, despite that, it does spook investors thinking that that might be the case. And uh, eventually, as a result of that, Ethereum dropped uh, below, uh, dropped essentially 6%. Uh, and the best way to show that is to show this on the chart as usual. And let's move over to this time, the, uh, the Bitcoin chart. If you haven't done so, please leave a like and subscribe to this channel because we are delivering you high quality technical analysis, news update, and pretty much Anything you need to uh, and you want to be aware of when it comes to uh, to crypto, Bitcoin and altcoins altogether. Uh, straight from the source, from somebody that has been trading for nearly a decade right now. Uh, and is not out there to misinform you, but actually give you quality information. With that said, move to the chart. This is what you see, uh, the Ethereum Bitcoin chart. So this is not the uh, USDT pair. As you can see, we are talking here about 0.05. And that means that we are talking here about Satoshis rather than uh, Tether, rather than USDT. So the way that the chart currently looks like is... Uh, uh, the chart does show weakness and that is because of the fact that we have broken out after a multi-year long uh, consolidation pattern or in other words accumulation zone during the course of uh, 2018, 2019 and even 2020 and even a part of 2021. Very big accumulation zone where we have busted out and progressed upwards in an upwards trajectory or in other words an uptrend on uh, this uh, particular pair which paved the way for a uh, big altcoin season at the time and uh, the growth of uh, of the crypto altcoin space at the time quite uh, quite significantly now uh, from there on out we have been in yet another range for a multitude of years once more drizzling down to that support line where that 0.05 has been tremendous support for a long 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 while where we saw some bounces front runs with reactions drops below back test fake outs and then getting back in and now once more we now are in the process of actually losing it uh, after back testing this as resistance we are continuing a trajectory down and this does propose some dangers over here on ethereum because um, if we are to come back into this previous white box then it does open up for the potential to trade lower all the way to the lows of uh, where we were at 2019 
right? Now, having that said, this is where this is where the crux lies. Usually, when there is a lot of FUD, when um, the price initially does react on it, but nine out of ten times, and especially when it does come to Ethereum, we are now in a situation where it's very uncertain whether we are in a bull market or whether we are in a bear market or if an altcoin season ever does come. We have seen this in the past. We have seen extreme bearishness uh, on Ethereum, declaring the coin dead, problems in the team, problems in development, etc., etc. It's all the all the negative news is piling up into a certain uh, a certain climax right now. We are starting to see big signs of that and History speaks or history tells us that 9 out of 10 time, that is usually where we are very close to a bottom, which is also something that is reflected in the chart. Because I just mentioned, if we come into back into the white box over here, it is done and dusted for Ethereum. We are going to zero. Uh, however... This can also be seen as long as we are not in that box yet, or at least, let's say, don't close on a high time frame, let's say a weekly candle, for example, don't close back inside, this could be support. So this does have potential for, let's say, this week to trade a little bit in this box, maybe a little bit in it, and then eventually bounce from it and attempt to get back into the upper white box. So that is uh, how I'm currently reading the chart. There is potential for a really big bounce at the point where people are the most negative about uh, or pessimistic about this asset. So that is currently how it stands with Ethereum. Time will tell whatever is going to happen. The good thing though is we have a chart and based off of the news, it tells us what the sentiment is, but we use that chart to actually see, okay, is this now weak or do we have potential to bounce? The most important thing here is we have the level. We know what to look for. If we bounce, it is actually a sign of strength, possibly a bottom. If we don't, then yes, it is indeed not very positive and we can look for lower prices. However, if you are a trader, it doesn't have to be that bad because if you are a trader, you don't only have to you know, invest in projects. You can you can go long and you can go short. If you are wondering where I am currently doing that, then I highly recommend trying out the 2-bit exchange. Big shout out to you guys. It's my main exchange. I love it. It has no KYC. It has great bonuses, especially if you sign up with the link that uh, comes included in the description below. It it costs zero of your uh, uh, effort and time. You don't have to share your legal documents in order to create that account. And if you do create your account with the link that is included in the description of this video below, you get free access to our Signals channel if you go on our website, Thrive Labs, connect your 2-bit account there and uh, within a jiffy you will have access to over 100 trading signals per month absolutely at no additional cost so try that out i would say and with that let's move over to the next topic of today which is um obviously bitcoin let's talk about bitcoin guys bitcoin is obviously at a pretty crucial area if you have been watching the live stream last friday then you know that i have been eyeing sixty one thousand dollars. but there's a little bit more to it because this is quite a big week a very 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 big week the first thing that we have to address is this week we are seeing a possible end of an era with a first rate cut in four years Probably on Wednesday. So that is definitely uh, coming. Um, it is a big event after we have seen a major bear market in crypto after seeing rate uh, rate rates increase. Now the time has come that it's time to start lowering those rates. So how is that going to play out in terms of price and volatility? Personally, I expect heavy volatility but not necessarily until wednesday so what is the expectation here what can we expect personally i expect relatively quiet price action until wednesday and then we get that big volatility um uh, during that interest rate cut which by the way will be documented live here on stream so definitely you want to be a part of that hit that like subscribe and also hit that bell so you get that notification once i go live we're going to look at the price action together and as that announcement is going to come in so you can learn how price moves during news events 
and keeping it grounded based off of technical analysis. It's going to be good. So please join us. Um, what is the expectation? The expectation simply is that the central bank is expected to lower some rates, uh, to lower the interest rates uh, to a new range. At the moment, it's standing at five five and a half percent. So the expectation at the moment is anywhere between 5% and uh, 5.25%. So the question really is, okay, so how much are they going to cut? And that is really where the narrative is starting to change towards now, you know. Uh, the traders are a little bit fluctuating, especially when these dates are coming closer. They're starting to adjust their opinion a little bit, where last week it was 70% in favor of half a percent rate cut. Uh, and 25 for a uh, quarter of a of a basis point now or in just the, over the weekend already shifted more towards that 50 50 making it so that a lot of people are anticipating on both outcomes pretty much equally and it's just a matter of okay does it uh, does the final rate cut meet the expectations of the majority uh, then you know you you get you get a little bit of an expected price trajectory and if it doesn't then price can get extremely volatile however due to the fact that these interest rates cuts are probably the most anticipated financial events of uh, uh, financial event Basically, that has occurred in the last four years. This is it. So that is the reason why I'm personally expecting quite heavy volatility uh, on the on the price section, and uh, that is where we can thrive as day trades. I love it personally. So that is that is great. However, I can understand that it is a little bit scary for some of you. So. Moving back to that, that is pretty much the expectation. Uh, and the, the, the question and the narrative is going to change to the fact like, okay, how much are they going to cut and how many times? That is really where the narrative uh, has changed as opposed to when. That was the narrative one year ago was, okay, when are we going to start cutting rates? Now the narrative has changed because everybody kind of mutually already agrees that rate cuts are coming. It's even announced already by the Fed. So it's pretty much a certainty that they will cut. But now the question is, how much are they going to cut and when? And there's a lot of inter intricacies in um, in how people are going to interpret that. If there's a bigger, bigger rate cut, it might worry some people uh, because it might uh, you know the people people look for reasons for for everything so <laughs> of, of obviously it's going to be dissected word for word every speech and that is probably what a lot of uh, traders are going to make decisions based off of uh, of those speculations and uh, that is going to move the price and that is going to give us some good volatility i think to come on bitcoin um, now, if we are uh, moving on with that, um, you know, the, a lot of people are probably agree with me that it's going to move the market quite significantly because it's just simply has been 54 months since that last, uh, since that first rate increase actually has happened. And, um, um, you know, how, how can this play out? So let, let's move to that topic. How can this actually play out in practice? So according to this Yahoo Finance article that does explain it very well, saves me some time of explaining it myself. Uh, it, it basically suggests it's 50-50 that uh, the rate cut is going to be uh, like a quarter point or a half a percentage cut, right? So it's it's really 50-50. So which way can this will go? And, and what other events do we have this week uh, to keep in mind when it comes to uh, potential volatility? Maybe we can even get some fake outs at first and then the day after we get the real move. Uh, there's more going on because obviously uh, right after those uh, announcements, we will also have a news conference half an hour later. And that is where um, uh, Powell, or, you know, the head of the, of the Fed, often surprises traders with a, with a point that they haven't made in the announcement. And uh, I would say a key point that most, uh, that a lot of people are going to look for, and I will, I will look for that myself as well, is are they going to, is he going to give any clues in how much rate cuts are coming? Usually they tell it very cryptically, and, uh, that, but that is, that is a key point that I personally would look out for. And, you know, I want to share this with you. If you are interested in this and if you are watching that, then um, you can basically filter out all anything else that he says uh, as long as you can find 
you know that key point where he, where he makes that suggestion to the guidance on how many more rate cuts might be coming, uh, because that that sets the expectation for some time to come. Uh, we also then can can dissect like okay, how much are they going to cut? You know, so if that is of interest to you, and as you know. I will have to put a disclaimer here. I am obviously a technical trader, but these events do influence price movements and do set expectation when it comes to long-term price uh, price fluctuations. So for me, I'm not going to make any predictions like, oh, this is bullish or bearish, but I'm making predictions of when that volatility comes in. I have important key levels ready on the chart and if it reaches there during that volatility then i know exactly what to do and that is how i'm actually able to make money based of the news that comes out rather than just mindlessly entering or exiting into trades like most people do uh, and then lose it and then lose it and that is the that is the edge that we can create um, as traders by being aware of the overall context but actually making trading decisions based off of technical analysis that is what we do in Thrive Labs we have a discord community you're more than welcome to join that where I update about actual price action we don't really talk about the news there but we're talking about price action non-stop uh, and I'm there around real time uh, so you can follow along with my analysis and the way that I'm trading as well. Now, speaking of price action, let's move over to the Bitcoin chart and see what we can expect. Currently, Bitcoin is in uh, in an interesting area. It is in an interesting area and uh, we are essentially trading between two daily levels. As I, uh, allow me to flip over. What we've done last Friday, last Friday, um, we have been ranging over here, establishing an important support level, coming in here at 57,309. In, in the latter part of the day, we've uh, traded outside of that range into our important high time frame, 60 to $61,000 key area. And as a matter of fact, we have been rejected very precisely which once again i will repeat is the reason why we want to use technical analysis to make those trading decisions on because if you are looking at a golden pocket over here taken from this high sixty-five thousand dollars to the low at fifty-two thousand dollars as you can see just lining that up very nicely we can see if we scale down to the lower time frame even on the five minute time frame how absolutely perfect that technical analysis is respected. That is what we got rejected off from thus far. And that brings us in a more of a range bound environment where we are having those two daily levels over here with 60,524 as resistance and $57,309 as support. And with that, those two levels are currently the, the support and resistance levels that we need to know about on Bitcoin before we can see any further progression. Meaning that price action outside of these key levels are prone to be very volatile. It would be great if that lines up with the news, but I do expect that until then we are remaining in these type of boundaries. And if we are having any volatility within these two levels, then we can use those levels to fade the move, for example, to the upside uh, or to the downside. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that I've shown you some nifty tricks on the chart, how to how to combine speculative news into an actionable trading plan with actual real levels that we can judge from whether the price action is looking strong or weak. And with that said, if you want to learn all of this, join Thrive Labs. That's where you can learn all of this, not only in real time, if that is not your thing or if you don't feel ready for that. We do have an academy where you have courses that you can follow at your own pace until you feel ready to participate in real-time price action and even then you can be coached live along the way looking forward to see you join there and um thank you for watching please leave a like and subscribe it would help out this channel massively if you enjoy this content and with that said i'm going to end this video right now and see you on wednesday during that announcement where we're going to observe bitcoin price action live looking forward to seeing you all there interact with you in the chat and until then take care trade safe and goodbye